Matthew at uh, UCLA, um, and this is on economic MPC. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Matthew. How do we uh, make this guy bigger? Yeah, if you want to make it bigger, then we just go to view and full screen. Thank you. Yeah, as our session chair said, my name is Matt Ellis. Uh, I'm from UCLA. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about a very exciting uh, work of a mine, and that is on EMPC, Economic Model Predictive Control, with explicitly time-bearing objectives. Next generation manufacturing will feature a very tight integration between uh, process operations, economics, and optimization. Specifically, within chemical process control, we're mainly focused on this real-time energy management. The current paradigm to achieve this is a two-layer paradigm. In the upper layer, process economics are optimized over steady-state process models. This computes uh, steady state or economically optimal steady states that are used as targets in the lower process control layer to force the system to operate on these steady states. And I think we've had two talks now on model predictive control. Uh, typically, within chemical process control, uh, model predictive control is used in this lower layer for its unique ability to optimally control multiple input, multiple output systems while accounting for process constraints. Now, to achieve this next generation manufacturing, numerous calls have been made to make, uh, integrate economic optimization directly in the context of model predictive control. So this is where we are. We have economic considerations that come into this upper layer, and this computes economically optimal steady states. They're used as targets in the MPC layer to force the system to operate on these steady states. Now within this context, a quadratic cost function is typically employed, which just penalizes the deviations of states and inputs from their corresponding steady state values. Under mild assumptions, this will actually lead to a steady state operation. Okay, so how do we achieve that next generation manufacturing? Well, we can actually replace the cost function at, with a, just a general cost function that accounts directly for the process economics. Now, what's, not, what's hidden in here is the fact that this cost function may not be positive definite with respect to a specific steady state. More specifically, this cost function may not take its optimal value at a steady state. So as a result, this may lead to uh, time varying or dyna dynamic, op uh, dynamic operation. So we consider two main reasons for why you'd want to operate a system in a continuously dynamic uh, operating fashion. First, uh, explicit time de dependence of economic considerations. So here I've plotted out the energy cost, the average energy cost uh, with time. You can see it's very much a, time, a function of time. So the second one is a limitation on raw materials. So we only have so much material that we can feed to our process. How do we best distribute to that to the, uh, to the process to maximize our profit, okay? Within the context of this talk, I'm gonna mainly consider this first uh, one where we have explicit time dependence of our economic considerations. So a lot of work has been done recently on EMPC but mainly with uh, time invariant cost functions. There has been a limited amount of work on explicitly time invariant objective functions, mainly within the context of a two layer EMPC structure, as well as an EMPC structure with a terminal constraint on the basis of a equilibrium manifold. However, as the economics become, uh, the economics change on a comparable time scale as the process dynamics, there's no reason for uh, economic op operation or the optimal trajectory be anywhere near some equilibrium manifold. Furthermore, considering the importance of real-time energy management, it's important to consider this area where we have an EMPC formulated on the basis of a time-bearing economic uh, objective function. So we're going to consider this class of nonlinear system. X in this case is our state, U is a bounded input, and W is a bounded disturbance. Uh, for the context of this work, we're going to assume that uh, we have measurements of X available synchronously at every sampling period delta. Lastly, it's always important to point out that we're applying control actions to this system, this continuous time system, in a sample and hold fashion. 
we assume for this uh, system there's a cost function described by this function right here. So we can see explicit time dependence in the cost function. Furthermore, uh, we note that for this particular work, the type of systems that would really benefit from this uh, EMPC structures are what I said before. Uh, the time scale of the change of the economics be comparable to the time constants of the process. So as I pointed out, if, uh, in traditional paradigm, we update the steady state as the economics uh, are, are changed with time. So for this particular process, we assume that there exists some manifold, and this could be thought of as the uh, set of admissible steady states for the process. Now we have to impose some st stabilizability assumptions on the system. So we assume that there exists a Lyapunov-based controller. This is an explicit controller for each one of these points uh, in our set gamma, which is just the equilibrium manifold that renders the closed loop system asymptotically stable under continuous implementation. Applying appropriate converse theorems, this will actually uh, imply that we can find a uh, Lyapunov function for the closed loop system. And for this particular work, since um, we have this each fixed XS in our set gamma, we parameterize the Lyapunov function with uh, this parameter XS, which is just our steady state. For each one of these uh, steady states in our set gamma and the each one of the <coughs> Lyapunov-based uh, controllers, we can actually characterize the stability region. We call that omega rho xs. And omega rho xs can be just taken as a level set of the Lyapunov function. Furthermore, if we just plot out a bunch of these steady state or stability regions for many of these points in the set gamma, so this is our set gamma, it's our equilibrium manifold, we can plot out many of these uh, stability regions, and the intersection um, we'll call X, capital X. It's just the uh, shaded region here, and we'll use this in the construction of our uh, EMPC later. Namely, we'll construct an invariant set on the basis of this intersection. Or, I'm sorry, uh, union, union. So just to review uh, uh, EMPC, more specifically Lyapunov-based EMPC, it's a two-mode uh, controller paradigm. In the first mode of operation, we're allowed to operate the system in a <coughs> dynamic fashion while operation is maintained in this uh, stability or subset of the stability region, omega rho hat. So we just enforce that the predicted state be within that uh, stability or subset of the stability region. Under this uh, mode of operation, the provable stability is boundedness in omega rho, our stability region. Under the second mode of operation, uh, we enforce that the Lyapunov base or the Lyapunov function decreased by at least the rate given by our explicit feedback controller. This ensures convergence to a small neighborhood of the uh, steady state. So th this is for uh, time invariant cost functions. So how do we apply these concepts to continuously time varying or just time varying economic objective functions? Well, we'll, we'll consider this. So uh, now, instead of using this omega rho as our invariant set, we're going to use that big set x as our invariant set. So if we just change that so that it's now our uh, invariant set becomes x, we define this subset x hat as where we allow time variant operation. And x hat has a special property. Namely, if we come out of x hat, we stay within x but we can also force the system back to x hat uh, over successful sampling periods. So this will define mode one and mode two operation. So mode two or mode one operation, we allow for time varying operation within x hat. And mode two, we force the system back to x hat. So this is just the formulation that accomplished what I just said. Mode one, we maintain the predicted state in x hat. And mode two, we oppose a uh, Lyapunov-based constra uh, constraint similar to our previous mode two uh, to enforce convergence to x hat. So this is just a summary of what I, uh, the implementation strategy. But I do want to point out one thing. For any x or any state in our set x, we can find a stability region correspond to one steady state in gamma. So this is what this is saying. 
we can use this steady state to impose the Lyapunov based uh, constraint and enforce uh, convergence back to x hat. So that, that's just basically what this implementation strategy is saying. We actually can do a rigorous theoretical treatment of the closed loop system and show that uh, for any state starting in our uh, stability region X, the uh, operation is always maintained in capital X. So that's all well and great. Now let's actually apply this to a chemical process example to show how it performs. So consider a uh, well-mixed non-isothermal CSTR where three, uh, first or, yeah, three first order exothermic reactions take place. For this process, we have two inputs, the inlet concentration and the heat supplied to the reactor. Also to assess the stability properties, we'll add some bounding, bounded Gaussian white noise to the process just to model the uh, process disturbances. Now first step is actually to construct this set X. So considering uh, many uh, Lyapunov uh, function candidates, they're all quadratic, and we com compute this for various uh, P matrix in the Lyapunov function, and so we can compute many uh, s stability regions, these ome omega rho sets, <coughs> and then with this, we can actually compute this X, we just approximate it through a series of quadratic and linear inequality constraints. So that's how we'll impose uh, this uh, the state B maintain in X in our EMPC. Now to design the economic cost function, we're going to consider that we want to minimize this function that accounts for energy, uh, raw material price, and the production of B, so we're actually going to credit the cost to, for the production of B, as well as a safety factor. This just ensures that the operation being maintained within uh, the median uh, temperature. For the purposes of this study, we're going to consider that uh, A3 and A4 are time invariant, while A1 and A2 vary with time. So here's the real-time uh, energy management. We're uh, accounting for the fact that the energy m price might change with time. So let's go ahead and apply this to the CSTR example. We're going to consider two cases. In the first case, we assume that we know exactly how these uh, weighting coefficients will change with time. In the second case, we recognize that, practically speaking, it might not be possible to, under, or to know exactly how these weighting coefficients will change in time. So we can see that uh, this is a very dynamic or time-varying operation, never quite settles on any particular state. And furthermore, we notice that there's uh, various differences, namely in the way that uh, it supplies C, uh, the reactant material to the reactor under these two cases. If we compare this to a more traditional paradigm, namely uh, conventional MPC that works to drive the system to the optimal steady state, which is given by these dashed lines, we see that the achievable trajectories are much different under conventional uh, EMP, or MPC. So basically, we can't achieve these trajectories with EMPC that we can't, or I'm sorry, with MPC that we can with EMPC. If we compare the total economic cost of these uh, various scenarios under um, the first EMPC where we know exactly how the uh, weighting coefficients change with time, we see an average improvement of 79.8% in the total economic cost. If we don't know exactly how the uh, weights change with time, we see a 79.3%. So just mild degradation even if we don't know the, um, how the weighting coefficients change with time. Lastly, we just wanted to show that, in fact, this does maintain a stability of the process, even in the presence of disturbances. So we define this subset of our stability region X, and we show that uh, basically all, for all times we um, are maintained in the set X. So what I just presented to you was a Lyapunov-based economic model predictive control that accounts directly for explicitly time-varying economic objective functions. Uh, we constructed this invariant set through um, an explicit control law and then applied it to a chemical process example and showed, in fact, that we could demonstrate significantly, uh, significant closed-loop economic performance improvement over conventional uh, MPC. Thank you for your attention, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you.
great. Um, well, uh, we have time for a few questions for Matthew. Uh, so you mentioned that, I mean, you're doing this mostly on processes that would have a similar time cost in the economic and the system. I mean, are you looking at anything where I mean, that's not the case? Because I mean, many times in a real system, real plan, that's the case. That's why you have the different right right absolutely um, I mean we could still apply this uh, example or this uh, this con this framework to that type of example however the benefit that we'd see may not be I as much as when they are the time scales are comparable uh, we could always resort back to uh, time invariant EMPC for that case Great. Um, any other questions? So uh, I have a question about the safety factor that you put in there to yeah. have it drive toward, was it 385? Uh, 395. 395. 395. Yeah, but so is that required in this case? Well, I, I'm just curious about your thought process. About yeah. That um, that. <coughs> I just go get it up. Um, if for this particular process, uh, the stability properties of this, uh, I think we have it in this uh, this plot. Yeah, so we can see the temperature range is, is pretty large in terms of the stability regions. However, practically speaking, it, it may not be practical to actually operate in such a large uh, temperature region. So that was the reason why I imposed that quadratic-like term. Okay. Is that why it kind of congregates there around 395 in the end? Is yeah, the exactly. Of that factor? Yeah, yeah. So what would happen if you just took away that safety factor. Well, what we've seen is actually that uh, the evolution can actually be over much larger uh, temperature ranges and for this particular case. Uh, for some uh, cost functions that we've looked at, we don't actually add this and uh, the operation is still practical speaking. So I'm um, not saying that we need it in every case, but for this particular case, uh, we had to use this <coughs> mix between pure economic terms and kind of engineering terms. Okay. I have a quick comment because, as a matter of fact, uh, if you go to the objective function, yeah, because I, I might miss the point here, you can explain it to me. If you look to the objective function here in a practical, real situation in a plant, any MPC, the conventional one or the modified one, will maximize the production, and if the raw materials is going to be fixed be controlled or if the, uh, the, the you can have more change in the raw material so you can maximize the production too so as a matter of fact either you control the production or you control the feed so the raw material will be fixed and you will need to maximize the production and energy will be irrelevant as a matter of fact post wise if it is lower or higher your MPC logically will always go for maximizing the production Okay. Under the given constraints, of course, of the temperature of the catalyst. Okay. So I think this will be better explained in a wider scope, in a process, where you have some trade-offs. So you can say, you know what, your energy now is higher, so you can do so and so in your separation on the specification of the product, the window of the operating window of the specification, something like this. Okay. Yeah, so I see. It will be straightforward. Yeah, actually, uh, for this particular case, we chose this two-dimensional example just for ease of illustration. I uh, so, but yeah, certainly, actually, we have uh, looked at larger scale systems, uh, specifically uh, alkali uh, alkylation of a benzene. Uh, we've looked at the, that type of uh, reactor. We've seen quite significant bit of that with EMPC. Thank you. Okay. Great. Let's thank Matthew one more time.